I've created an EEG lab plugin called the Time Frequency Analysis Package that is primarily geared towards conducting complex Morlet wave convolutions. However, I'll probably add some additional techniques over time. And this package can work with both EEG lab and ERP lab data. The package is available both in the EEG lab plugin list and on my OSF page. And that package includes the demo scripts that I'll be working through in these videos. And those links will be in the description. The meat of this package is in the MWD function, which is a standalone function, but it also has an associated pop function so that it can be used in EEG lab and provides a GUI. It also comes with a few other EEG lab pop functions that are useful when performing time frequency data, baseline normalizations, extracting information from complex signals, and a couple plotting and visualization tools. All right, I've created a short script that is meant to help demonstrate how to create Morlet wavelets using the MWD function in a few different ways. The MWD or Morlet wavelet decomposition function is the standalone function that does not require EEG lab to run. It simply takes an EEG signal matrix and convolves it with as many complex Morlet wavelets as are defined. Uh, and here I'm going to demonstrate how to define these wavelets for the MWD function. I'm only interested in how to define the wavelets here though, not in actually performing a convolution. What this demo script will do is allow you to define one or multiple wavelets using the MWD function, and it will plot these wavelets and provide additional information about them. All the information that we plotted and shown here are contained within the dat output argument, and I'll show its contents in more detail later. You can see though that I've discarded the first three output arguments since these contain the results of the convolution. But even though we don't care about the convolution here, just the wave of creation, we still need to provide a signal to the MWD function since it will still perform a convolution anyway. So I've created a simple dummy signal here. It is a 10 second long 10 hertz sinusoidal signal. And here I've passed that signal with its sampling rate into the MWD function. But it is the final three input arguments that define the wavelets. The first defining input sets the center frequency of the wavelet. So I'm defining a 10 hertz wavelet here. And the last two arguments set the parameter and its value. Here I've defined n to equal four, meaning that I want four cycles in my 10 hertz wavelet. So now if I run this script, a window will appear showing the wavelet that I just defined in both the time and the frequency domain. Now a secret and probably a tangent is that the MWD function actually creates this Gaussian in the frequency domain. Uh, and you can see that take place here. And the time domain wavelet is simply the inverse Fourier transform of that Gaussian as you can see here. I did this to ensure a unit spectral gain at the center frequency, and it was much simpler to do this in the frequency domain and then to compute the equivalent time domain wavelet than it would have been to calculate the amplitude of the time domain wavelet that would result in this unit spectral gain. So actually this plotted wavelet does not show its true time domain amplitude. I've just normalized it so that it is easier to visualize here although the true amplitude is contained in the DAT structure. I also found that it made more sense for me to directly design the frequency domain wavelet since I never actually use the time domain wavelet for anything except visualization. In fact, although I refer to this as a convolution, I'm not actually performing a time domain convolution at all, but I'm instead point by point multiplying this frequency domain wavelet with the Fourier transform of the EEG signal. This is mathematically equivalent to the time domain convolution, but it turns out to be hugely more efficient computationally. But anyway, back to the wavelets. Uh, in the time domain here, you can see the 10 hertz wavelet. It is a complex wavelet, so you have a sine and a cosine component, and the Gaussian envelope is also shown here. The bar up top indicates the wavelet's full width at half maximum, which is 150 milliseconds in this case. This half maximum width is the wavelet span between 0.5 amplitude crossings in the normalized wavelet. And this is a good indicator of the temporal resolution that you can achieve with this wavelet. And this will of course grow with increasing cycle counts. In the frequency domain, this wavelet is represented as a Gaussian centered at 10 Hertz. And this has a width at half maximum as well, indicating the frequency resolution. And this will shrink with increasing cycle counts. So there's of course a trade-off between the wavelet's time and frequency resolution. 
Now, this convolution response is essentially a bandpass filter, and this is the frequency response that can be achieved. So the frequency domain full width at half maximum is equivalent to the width of the bandpass filter's passband, with the 0.5 crossings being the half power or negative three decibel points. Usually though, we'll want to convolve the EEG signal with multiple wavelets. And so I can define more wavelets by adding their center frequencies here in an array. And so I'll add a 20 and a 90 hertz wavelet. And now running the script, we can see these wavelets now too. These all have four cycles since I only defined one end value, but I can define this for each wavelet by adding more cycle counts to this array. And I need either one end value or as many values as there are wavelets. I typically find defining wavelets by their cycle counts to be unintuitive though. And in fact, Mike Cohen himself suggests that defining them based on their widths at half maximum is probably a better method. And so I include that option with this function for both the time and frequency domain. You can simply change the parameter to full width at half maximum and add an F for frequency domain. And I'll say that I want each wavelet to have a half maximum width of eight hertz. Now you see that we have been provided that and the cycle count for each wavelet has changed to achieve this result. I can also instead define the width in the time domain by adding a T here. And I'll set this to be 0.4 seconds. And I can of course still define each wavelet's width individually. So I'll add a 0.5 and 0.2 seconds here arbitrarily. Now, finally, I'm going to quickly show the contents of the DAT structure itself. This structure contains all of the information that I've shown in these plots so far, and it may be useful to explore this script to see how this information is captured and visualized. But in this structure, you can first see the center frequencies of the three wavelets that we've already defined. And here's the cycle counts for each wavelet in order. Also up top is the full width at half maximum in both the time and frequency domain for each wavelet. And here you have the actual wavelets in the time domain marked by TD with each row containing the values for each wavelet and the time vector marked by TV over which the time domain wavelets can be plotted. This time vector is the x-axis of those earlier plots. And just the same wavelet FD is the frequency domain wavelet and FV uh, contains the frequency vector as well. Of course, all of this information about how to define wavelets and the contents of the DAT structure is contained in the commentary at the start of the mwd.m script file. And this may be more readable using the doc command. But I thought that rather than digging through program commentary, that this would be more easily understood with a video demonstration and a demo script file.